All you need to know is that the name of the show was Blank Check. No, objectively, I think this is as good as any English language film ever made. Uh, well, I think it's definitely the second best thing Paul McCrane was ever involved with. Okay, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I love this movie. The film we're talking, I, I about, today, the film we're talking about today is called Robert Cop. Please don't do that. Robert Cop? Half man, half machine, 100% Robert. <laughs> no, it's half, half Robert, <laughs> half cop. Babo Cop. <laughs> this is a movie that works for the smartest person in the room and the dumbest person in the room. This movie has a real humanism to it that seems incompatible with everything else this film is doing. You a college boy or something? Huh? Balls to the wall satire, this sort of deconstruction of the American hero mythology, our obsession sure. with violence, yes. the culture at the time, our relationship to technology, and also just like a movie about like a fucking good guy trying to remember who he is. Murphy, huh? Yeah, that's me. Man, hi. What brings you to this little paradise? It's, me, man. it's a commercial action futuristic thriller on the face of it. At the heart of it is about the discovery of what it is to be human. Ain't nobody seen this stuff, you know, since Gort. I think it's a great American movie made by a sex-obsessed Dutchman. I mean, shooting through the legs of the woman to hit his dick, isn't it? <laughs> that was me. Paul Verhoeven. He grew up in Holland during Nazi occupation. He lived in The Hague as a young boy. We're talking yes. when he was like five. But he said that that kind of desensitized him. He was living under the Nazi boot. V-2 rockets were going off over his house and Blancaster bombers were dropping bombs in his front yard when they missed the V-2s. He just understood from a very, very young age the full extent of the sort of evils, pain and suffering of humanity. And is sort of like one of the greatest living experts on Jesus Christ. Ooh, guns, guns, guns. When he was a very young boy, he saw a Heronius Bosch painting. Heronius Bosch, isn't it? Wow, got real dense in here. He saw this painting that was like a big battle between heaven and hell going mm -hmm. on. And in the background of the painting, there was a man leaning against a shed, taking a shit. And yeah, Paul Verhoeven yeah, yeah. said, these are the kind of films I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little sin in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the corner that can be easily covered because it's only there. It's always when you portray your own society in a kind of a, let's say, harsh and negative way that people will probably be offended. The moment you bring that up and say, well, you know, this is what it is, then people get really pissed off. He has been chased out of the Netherlands. He starts obsessively watching American action films. And really studying the rhythms to try to figure out what connects with the American populace. He's just going to talk for the whole episode, guys. So Orion is a pretty substantial studio at this time, but doesn't make huge budget films. They're sending him a lot of scripts. He reads a script. It's called Robocop, the, the future of law enforcement, it was called. And it's always so idiotic and so American. And his wife, she reads the script, said like, Paul, you idiot. This screenplay concerns all of your main thematic interests. I got really inspired by what was already on the paper, by extending that, emphasizing it, pushing it. In his own words, Verhoeven says, this is the American Jesus, the figure we've needed within the American mythology who died for our sins. Oh, great. And at the end rises and walks on water. Very deliberate choice. Uh -huh. So how does this movie start? The way all good movies start, with giant letters that say Robocop. <laughs> That's how Citizen Kane starts, right? It's the Robocop. The best way to start a movie. <laughs> the trend with these movies at the time was you always started with a big action set piece. The first attack, here's the hero's entrance, whatever it is. This movie goes from fucking big silver letters Robocop to a news broadcast. This is Media Break. You give us three minutes and we'll give you the world. Good morning. I'm Casey Wong with Jess Perkins. It has no interest, despite how much Verhoeven was studying American action films, in playing by the exact rules of what everyone else is doing. And it's also this brilliant way to fucking A, get exposition out in a world-building way to establish the rules without having to do inner titles of, like, the year is 2049. Blade Doesn't Runners. do that shit. We'll be back in a moment. My name is Robert Cop. Nice to meet you. Uh, what's up, Robert? I'm in need of great talent for my business, but short on time. Why don't you use ZipRecruiter? That sounds phenomenal. It's nice to meet you, Robert. Italian art history professor. Oh, Griffin's back. Oh, hey, Robert, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Nice to see you, Griffin, my best friend. 
That is canon. Of course, why are you saying this? Everyone knows this. I'll see you later. We're going to hang out. We hang out every night. And then you come back and they give you the basic deal. Dick Jones has a big initiative. Ed 209. Beautiful stop motion from Phil Tippett. I felt having this kind of feeling that there might be sensors here, but what does he see exactly? He's partially blind, blind for what's happening in the world, you know. The law enforcement has a side that's blind. And that basically will just do like the Germans did in the Second World War, when the commanding officers say, shoot these people, they would just do it. That moment is when the movie is first like, this is how viscerally violent this movie right. is going to be. And this is for Hogan's whole thing is like, the violence is cartoonish, but I'm going to push it so far that it affects you on yes. a visceral level and upsets you, and you can't just write it off as like, exactly. oh, it's a comic Which is book. something he does again in uh, Starship Troopers, yes. especially. No, it's attack! Pretty fancy moves, Murphy. My son Jimmy watches this cop show TJ Laser, and this laser guy does this every time he takes down a bad guy, so naturally my, my kid thinks having good cop should be... And you don't want to disappoint? Yeah, well... Role models can be very important to a boy. What's important is what happens to poor Murphy. What happens in this? <laughs> he gets shot with 800 shotgun shells. Oh, where do they shoot? <laughs> well, the, the, the crucial thing we see is they shoot his hands off. The crucial scene, more like the crucifixal scene. I felt that the, the death of Murphy should be as cruel and as diabolical as the crucifixion of Jesus. All right, I think that's all we can do. On the commentary... Verhoeven said he wanted 40 seconds of black and silence. Wow. That would have been awesome. He wanted audiences to go like, is the movie (laughs) over? The hero just just died. Yeah. Right. Come back, POV. A masterful, masterful sequence. He's on. What's the story? We were able to save the left arm. I I like the little trappings of like narrative we get with the scientists. Just a little bit. A little bit. It is my great pleasure to present to you. Robocop. Oteen went to Verhoeven and said, please tease out the look, because I think if you just cut and show the suit, it's going to look goofy. After all this buildup is this very banal shot where they lock the cage. They lock the gates. Who were your guys? Who were you modeling your life after? I fucking love that guy. But then we cut to the firing range. No music, just the sounds of the shots. Everyone else is taking deliberate shots, and he's got this. Lewis is kind of the last to get smart to it. She's not easily impressed. No? She's not impressed by the flash, but she's starting to wonder what's going on here. And when he finishes, what does he do? TJ Laser. Yeah. David, where does he put his gun? Uh, it's in his leg. Oh, shit. Motherfucker puts his gun in his leg. Robocop just changed the game. He's got a leg holster. He puts it in the leg. Your move, creep. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you guys have lost your mind. So the gun is in the oh leg. Oh my god. Uh huh. I think it's just immediately clear like this is madness. Yes. I mean, like, that's why I love Robocop. He's not good. He's, he's bad. We should not have a Robocop. Robocop. Who is he? What is he? Where does he come from? See him on the playground with the kids. Newmeyer said that was the best day of filming because he's like, you make these movies and it's a bunch of angry, tired people and everyone's like pissed off. And then once we got to like a playground with kids talking to a robot cop, we were like, that's pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right, right, right. Any special message for all the kids watching at home? Stay out of trouble. More fighting in the Mexican I was overwhelmed by the way American television operated because in Holland and in Europe, the most terrible news would not be interrupted by commercials. Now this. Oh, what the hell, fry the chicken. Fry the chicken. Fry the chicken. Lewis stops him in the hallway. She goes, it's you, Murphy, it's you. It's you. Murphy, what the fuck does that mean? Click, click, murder. Click, click, cop killer. Click, click, Alex Murphy, deceased, flash. He's remembering. You're going to do every minute? 
He talks about Murphy in the third person, which I love. He's starting to feel some connection to Murphy, but he doesn't think it's him. He's getting so excited, guys. Because this is when this movie really starts kicking into, like, transcendent levels for me as he starts <laughs> reckoning with his identity. <laughs> You're so crazy. This kind of feeling, which you would call lost paradise. Can you do that, Dad? That intrigued me. That is something that I have always felt. I can nearly cry about the loss of the past. You're a stop. Yes, I am a cop. Then Rubber Cop comes to the office because he's got the evidence. Uh, 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 uh. Directive four. He cannot harm an employee of Omni Consumer products. It's a scenario that's playing out over and over and again now, right? Where like, don't put your info, your data, your life in the hands of private companies. This is a story about in the name of progress, in the name of commerce, in the name of business, they take a man's life. But what they don't take is his soul. Much like Jesus, they turned on him. Yeah, we get the Jesus thing. I built underneath the, the water, I built a grid, you know, so that he could walk on, over water and say, I don't arrest you anymore. But he means, I'm going to kill you now. And that's why I call it the American Jesus. <laughs> Final there. scene. I truly believe, and I know I'm saying a lot of hyperbolic things in this episode. <laughs> This is the best final line in the history of cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Think of another movie where there is a one word summation one of the entire word. thematic concern of the film resolved in one word. Try to think of good last lines. Old man goes, Dick! Director four, shut down. Thank you. Shoots him, boom. Puppet Ronnie Cox flies out the window. Crazy shot. The thumbs up guy at the that, end of the movie. That guy rocks Felton Perry. <laughs> that that guy plays Donald Johnson. He's so good. <laughs> and the old man goes, Nice shooting, son. What's your name? He gives a sly little smile. And he says, Louis, I think this, I is, think the this beginning is the beginning of a beautiful, beautiful friendship. friendship. Nobody's perfect. I'm, I'm finished. finished. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Fuck. <laughs> oh, that's a great last line. I just I rewatched that, that movie. Line. Yeah, that, that is an incredible last line. That's in my top ten last lines ever. It's in my top ten movies ever. But he says, Murphy. He starts out as Alex Murphy. He becomes Robocop, a man without an identity. He can't go home again. The wife and son are gone. He's not man. He's not machine. He's 100% cop. But he still knows what his fucking identity is. At the end of the day, he's Alex goddamn Murphy. And he's the American Jesus. At the end, he's an American Jesus. An American Jesus that uses his gun. Verhoeven tells a story about going to see the film after it did surprisingly well, and when it got to the end of the movie, before he even said they it, went Murphy. Murphy. And Verhoeven said he got chills, and it was the greatest moment of his career as a director. It was I, satisfying that's thing. pretty cool. That's great. RoboCop is a great movie that yeah. is a hilarious satire of American police militarization gone wild. And according to you, Jesus. Ow. Jesus, oh. <laughs> Ben just like dislocated We're his physically fucking elbow. falling apart now. Oh, I have a how skin you do that? I don't know. We have a good time making this show. Yeah, we have a great time. It's a great time. The only important thing is how his jaws look. Peter Weller has really the good jobs, you know? So, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's horrible to say this, but it's true too, you know? I mean, we also looked at his talent, and we did auditions or whatever that, but ultimately, the decision really of the whole crew was based on this. Would have done it in July. <laughs> what if he'd said that? <laughs>